invite you to stand up if you don't mind. And we're going to be praying for all these matters. Lift up a prayer for the church. The church in the Arab world. The church all over the world. The church in this country. That they, those who believe on the Lord Jesus will be encouraged these days to realize that this is nothing but another sign of his soon coming back. Let's pray right now. Father God, we lift up before you your church. Lift up before you the believers in Egypt, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Iraq, in Northern Africa, in the other Arab countries. And we pray also for your church in this country, Lord, as we see signs of your soon return, that people are straying. They're more interested in the physical than in the spiritual. In fact, they're becoming interested in the occult in the evil spiritual lord we pray that you give us a dose of encouragement today and ongoing this coming week that we may take the banner of life the gospel of mercy throughout this land lord and wherever we go we pray that there'll be encouragement for your church abroad and in this country in jesus name amen i'd like to invite you to stay standing while we're reading this verse of scripture from Genesis 3.15, which was the first time when mercy was announced. Let's read it together. Genesis 3.15. Let's go ahead. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. May the Lord bless his word to every heart this morning. Please sit down. Genesis 3.15 was the first time the gospel of mercy was ever heard or seen. This was the first time that God declared his mercy to mankind. And it's remarkable that this promise of mercy of Genesis 3.15 came so soon, as soon as the transgression took place. God did not wait until he told the woman that she shall travail in pain and that man shall suffer and shall go back to the dust where he came from. He did not wait, but he was in a hurry to announce his mercy to mankind. Isn't that amazing that God is in a hurry to show what? Mercy, folks. God has always intended to show mercy. Before judgment, God wants to show mercy. He's in a hurry to show mercy to you. I think we should rejoice today that our God is a God of mercy. He, we have a merciful God in our midst. And he wants to show us mercy. The Bible says in James chapter 2 verse 13, He that shall have no mercy and judges always will be shown no mercy. But look what he says at the end. And mercy exalts over judgment God wants to show mercy I think we need to remember this anytime the guilt comes and grips us anytime Satan wants to attack us and make us doubt that we have a God who is in a hurry to show mercy God is a God of mercy and he wants to show it to us he wants to show it to you this morning if you're struggling with issues in your life. Before the Lord told Adam, dust thou art and to dust returnst. Before he told any judgment to mankind, he said, let me show you mercy. And that mercy was in that verse of scripture, Genesis 3.15. In it, God said, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to your foe, the enemy. I'm going to crush his head. And by that, I'm going to be giving you mercy. Mercy to man, but judgment to Satan. Mercy to mankind and judgment to the enemy of mankind. It was a day of cruel triumph for Satan. Satan succeeded. He introduced sin to mankind. 
the new world was stained and stamped with the stamp of Satan. Satan put his S all over the creation of God. Sin was introduced to the new creation. Satan was happy. He was exulting cruelly about this. It's the happiness of someone who wants to take revenge. Someone who's already condemned wants to take as many people to be condemned with him. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 16 that those who are evil would like to bring others to evil as well. That's right. It says, for they do not sleep except when they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Satan said, if I'm going to hell, I'm going to take as many people to hell with me. And he said, I did it. You see, now everybody belongs to me. Mankind has become sinner. Therefore, I'm taking mankind with me to hell. But look what God came when Satan did that. He said in Genesis 3.15, he said, For I shall put enmity between you and the woman between your seed and her seed. He, the seed of the woman, will bruise your head, Satan. And you shall bruise his heel. Vengeance on the serpent, but mercy to mankind. This was the only gospel that was available to mankind until the flood. That's right. You see, Adam, Eve, Abel, Enoch, all the people up to Noah, they only had that one verse of scripture. And by that one verse of scripture, they were saved and they went to heaven. One verse of scripture was given to mankind until the flood, until Noah. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. I, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is it. But mind you, that verse of scripture is not scant information. It's loaded with information. As we will see today, this verse of scripture has all you need about the gospel. This verse of scripture contains about the incarnation of God. That's right. The seed of the woman. That a woman one day will give birth to someone who's able to crush the head of Satan. And that's what the angel Gabriel once told the Virgin Mary. She told him, how can that be? I don't know any man. And he told her in Luke chapter 1 verse 35, remember that it's not a man who's going to, you're going to be given birth through. The Holy Ghost shall come over you. And then the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, that Holy One which will be born of you shall be called what? Son of God. Son of God. And later on, God made this more clear. Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and they shall call his name what? Emmanuel, which means God with us. God became man, folks. This is great news. God announced in this verse of scripture that the seed of the woman will be coming and then he declared in that verse the doctrine of the two seeds. You see, the seed of the woman and the seed of the devil. It's always been like that. There are two, always two seeds. There's a Cain and an Abel. There's a Jacob and an Esau. There's an Isaac and there's an Ishmael. The two seeds. One seed belongs to Satan and one seed belongs to God. One seed is called the seed of the serpent. And one seed is called the seed of the woman. By birth, when we are born, we all belong to which? We belong to the seed of the serpent. That's right. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like to hear this, but by natural birth, you're born through Adam and you inherit the sin of Adam and you belong to the seed of the serpent. Only those who escape the clutches of the serpent, only those who are taken out from the hand of Satan, by faith in Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman who crushed the head of Satan will become part of the seed, the real seed that belongs 
to Christ. This verse also has talks about the suffering of Jesus Christ. You shall bruise his heel. The heel of Jesus was bruised there at the cross from Bethlehem to Golgotha. He was bruised. But it also talks about the breaking once for all of the power of Satan. And you shall bruise his head. Satan was bruised and deadly so. Never again to have any power to contain mankind. Speaks about this glory that we're heading unto. So much in this verse. But I'd like to take it in three ways this morning with you. First, I'd like to tell you about the facts that this verse speaks about. Secondly, I'd like to tell you about the experience. When you experience this verse, how it can become yours. And thirdly, I'd like to close with some practical, quick applications about that verse, Genesis 3.15. First, the facts. What are the facts of this verse? Let's look at it. It says, and I will put what? Enmity. Enmity enmity between you and the woman fact number one of this verse that enmity was clearly pronounced there's enmity now between us and Satan up to now mankind was befriending Satan that's right Eve was conversing with Satan she thought Satan was her friend she was taking advice from him what do you think I should do and Satan came and said, you will not die. Go ahead. I'm your buddy. You will not die. In fact, you can become better. You can become like God. Soon Eve realized and she said, the serpent has what? Deceived me. I was deceived. And therefore, when this happened God said I'm gonna declare it from here on that mankind your greatest enemy is Satan enemy Satan is your enemy he hates you he wants to deceive you he wants to cheat you enmity was clearly pronounced from here on they will not be any friendliness between you if you belong to the seed of the woman to Jesus Christ and Satan Romans chapter 9 verse 8 tells us that not everybody is of the seed of the woman no only those who get saved only those who were regenerated who were born again look what it says that is not the children of the flesh are children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for a seed. You need to have come to Christ by faith and receive from him salvation by his blood, by his merits, by his sufferings, by his resurrection. And now you belong to the real, the promised seed, the seed of the woman. And Christ came to destroy the works of the devil, to snatch his power and to snatch those who were deceived by him hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 says christ christ came to destroy him who had the power of death he also like partook of the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil verse 15 and deliver those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage that's why he came that's why he was born that's why he died that's why he rose from the dead. That's why he ascended. That's why he's coming back. That's why he wants to re make us realize that the devil is your enemy and he came to make that war on your behalf. And if you belong to him, you should hate the devil. You should not befriend the devil. You will not befriend the devil. In fact, you realize that the devil is your greatest enemy. Psalm 45 verse 7 speaks about godly people and people who belong to God. It says, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. When you belong to the seed of the woman, you realize that Satan is your enemy. I will put enmity between you and the woman. Enmity was clearly pronounced. And the second thing in our verse in Genesis 3.15, it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between you and her seed, he 
will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He will bruise your head. There's a he that is coming. There's someone, a champion was announced. A champion was announced. A champion that will take the cause and Satan, he will oppose and he will succeed. This champion, none else than the Lord Jesus Christ. This verse of scripture says that enmity was clearly pronounced, but also a champion, a great champion is now announced. It's none else than someone who is able to crush the head of Satan. Someone who has power over Satan is none else than God himself. And the Lord revealed this further in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. We took that verse before unto us a what? A child is born unto us. A son is given and his name shall be wonderful counselor, mighty God, eternal father and prince of peace. God will come as a champion in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will bruise the head of the serpent once for all. No wonder Satan was so angry when he was born. No wonder he was furious and he moved Herod to destroy him. No wonder he wanted to con him, flatter him, and craftily seduce him and tempt him for 40 days in the wilderness. No wonder. But then God is calling people out of the hand of Satan one by one. He's snatching disciples out of the clutches of Satan. And Satan is losing the grip. One person after another. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10 verse 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Satan is losing the grip, folks. He has been dealt the big blow by the champion, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Gethsemane, he opposed him. In Gethsemane, he was ferociously attacking our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Lord Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 22, verse, verse 53. In Gethsemane, he said, he said to them, But this is your hour, and the authority of the darkness has come. Satan is here to oppose what I'm about to do. But he went on to do it. And on the cross there, he blew Satan, the last blow of death on his head. He crushed his head. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 said, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing. Triumphing. And that Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Having disarmed principality and power, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. In the cross there was dealt the final blow to satan's head and there when christ was crucified we the seed of the woman who belonged to christ now we can say that satan has been given a deadly bruise a deadly crushing to his head and one day one day folks this Satan that is still tormenting people who's still on the loose, although he got a deadly blow to his head, one day he's going to be cast out and placed in the lake of fire once for all. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world. And verse 10 says, after that, verse 10, and I heard a great voice saying in heaven, Now has come the salvation and power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers is cast down who accused them before our God day and night. One day, folks, this Satan who's still on the loose, although he is already deadly bruised, is going to be put to shame once and for all, cast out never again to bother us. Enmity was clearly pronounced in this verse of scripture. The champion was announced. And thirdly, in this verse of scripture, we know that the champion heel should be bru brushed. It has to be bruised and brushed. Jesus Christ has to suffer. Jesus Christ has to pay the price. 
you see there his heel his lowest part the lowest part of the body is what the heel his humanity has to suffer his humanity has to pay the price there when they pierce his hands and feet when he was put to shame when he suffered in agony that's where his heel was being brushed and that's when satan unleashed on him everybody herod Pilate, the pharisees he unleashed the jews he unleashed the roman soldiers he unleashed the crowds go and make him suffer and it pleased God to let him suffer so that he pays for your sins and my sins. Enmity was clearly pronounced in this verse. The champion was announced. And then the champion heel should be brushed. But then last but not least it says that you shall bruise his head. The head of Satan will be crushed. The head of Satan once for all will be crushed. Satan's head is what now? Crushed. Have you ever seen someone who's been given a deadly blow to his head, he's bleeding and he's still going around trying to hurt people? I mean, you, know, you laugh at him, don't you? You say, you're dead. You're done. Martin Luther used to say this. He said, I laugh at Satan. He's done. He knows his time is finished. He knows that he was dealt a deadly blow. Don't be afraid of Satan because the champion, the Lord Jesus Christ, had dealt him a deadly blow to his head. Don't be afraid of Satan. He's done, folks. He's a defeated foe. And he cannot, he cannot do anything. He is going in a war against Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Do you think he's going to win that? He's done. He's been dealt the, dealt, dealt the blow. And one day, when Satan realized that he has destroyed mankind by death, one day we will stand there, have been resurrected, not only soul, but body. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55, we will proclaim and we will rejoice and we will chant and we will sing, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? Because our champion has earned for us not only redemption of our souls, but also for our bodies as well. Satan has been crushed so much in that one verse of scripture, enmity was clearly pronounced. The champion was announced. The champion heel will be brushed, but Satan's head will be crushed. All in that one verse of scripture, Genesis 3.15. It's the only verse of scripture by which many people before the flood were saved based on faith in that one verse of scripture they all died in faith and they went to heaven and you shall meet there adam and eve and you shall meet abel and you shall meet enoch and you shall meet noah and many others who came to christ because of that one verse of scripture the gospel of mercy that was announced in genesis 3:15. secondly i'd like to leave with you our experience as we believe these facts of that verse of scripture brothers and sisters we were all destined to wrath no matter who you were you could be belonging to the best family educated in the best university having the best cleanest job in the world and still heading to hell that's right people like cornelius a man who feared god and who offered alms to people was still heading to hell unless he heard the gospel that there is a champion that can rescue from the clutches of Satan. We're all heading to hell. The promise did not come to people who inherited salvation. You had to receive it by faith. John 1.13 it says that who were not born of blood, not by the will of man, not by the will of the flesh, but from who? from God God has to give you the salvation one-on-one -on -one. there are people who are born in evangelical homes well their father being a pastor and still going to hell because you cannot pass this by by inheritance this has to be given to you between you and God one-on-one -on -one. you cannot take it 
No man can give it to you. You have to receive it from God. That's why you need to be born again. John 3, 6 says, that's why I told you you need to be born. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. You need to be born again in the spirit by faith in the champion who came and dealt the, the bruise, the deadly blow to the head of Satan by his death on the cross and his resurrection. God wants us all to be saved. How does he do it? First, he puts enmity in your heart between you and the devil. That's right. He makes you realize, and I don't know how many people here can raise their hands and say, one day I suddenly realized that I was living in sin. Did that happen to you? Raise your hand there. Did that happen to you? One day I just realized, I don't want to end up like this. That's scary where I'm heading. I remember that night when it happened to me. I just suddenly realized my life is not good. I just realized that evil is my enemy. That Satan is not my friend. He awakens you to realize that there is not, it's not a good thing where you are. That's where grace begins. That enmity is clearly pronounced in your life. And it happens so. And you cry out with the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7 verse 24. Oh, wretched me. Who can deliver me from this body of death? I am in bad shape. Begins like that when enmity between you and this body of sin that you inherited is clearly pronounced. You begin to not like where you are and then suddenly you hear about the champion there comes the champion you hear about jesus christ oh here's my champion i know the champion and as soon as you hear about him and you believe in him suddenly you realize that sin has no more grip on your life look at me i can live a good life now something happened to me i heard of this champion that can give me new life the Apostle Paul writes in Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, My children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Suddenly the champion becomes yours. And you begin a new life and a new existence. And then and then next, next you are led, having believed those facts, you are led to have fellowship in his sufferings that's right the heel of the champion will be bruised suddenly you begin yourself experiencing persecution mocking suddenly you realize that your best friends are no longer your best friends i remember when that happened to me one of my, my my best friends the buddies the drinking buddies i used to have i call them drinking buddies used to get together we drank this uh this uh arak it's like uzo you put a little water on it, becomes white, and boy, that's a heavy, heavy alcohol. And you drink two or three of those, and you start talking anything you want, you know. Everything goes, and uh, had those buddies, you know, we'll meet together, etc. And then I came to Christ, and one night I went and I told about Jesus Christ. Never forget that good buddy of mine, drinking buddy for years. He called me, said, I don't want to see you ever again. I cried that night. I wept. I said, what happened? I came to Christ, now I'm losing friends. That's right. They start calling you fanatic, ridiculous. What's happened to you? You went crazy. That's right. You start partaking in the sufferings of the champion whose heel was bruised. You begin having cruel mocking. People look down at you. And then what happened as you experience those facts, you begin really conquering Satan. You realize that his head was crushed. Suddenly, for the first time, there are sins in my life that I thought I'll never be able to overcome. I can overcome. Addictions disappear. Drunkenness disappear. Drugs addiction disappear. No matter what, I can be victorious in Christ who dealt a deadly blow to Satan who had control of my life. I'm free. And you realize that, that suddenly you are a different person. That uh, when Satan comes to accuse you with something you've done, you say, I have been forgiven. Someone said when Satan comes to, re to remind you of your past, remind him of, the, of his future. Tell him you're heading to some bad land, Satan. Leave me alone. And the Bible says in Psalm 32 verse 1, blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. I am blessed. 
because my Savior paid for my sin. And then, and then you have this living hope that you champ, you will never leave you or forsake you. He will be with you. Your resurrection is assured. Your witness will be empowered. You will be protected no matter where, and you will crush the head of Satan yourself soon. You'll be doing this. In Psalm chapter 91, verse 13, it says, You shall tread upon the lion and adder. Tata ala al asad wasil, the young lion and the jackal, and you shall trample underfoot. And verse 14 says, Because he has set his love on me, therefore God says, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. All this is yours because you believed on those facts. First enmity was clearly pronounced. The champion was announced. And suddenly you realize that you have to suffer with him, but then you will conquer with him as well. Because of that. First the facts, then the experience of these facts. And last, I want to leave you today with quick practical advice from this verse Genesis 3:15. What's practical about this? First of all, when you believe in a promise from God, believe it all the way. Listen, if a promise is given by God, we should not take half of it. Take it all the way. Look, Adam did that. In Genesis 3 verse 20, Adam having received the mercy promise that enmity between you and the woman her seed and your seed he shall bruise your head and you shall crush bruise his heel adam goes and says and adam called his wife name what eve look look at this please look at this with me because she was what wait a minute wait a minute god just told adam that death you shall die to dust you shall return but you know what adam said I also received mercy and therefore my wife is going to have many children. He took the promise entirely by faith and he acted upon it and he said from here on Eve your name is the mother of all living things. We will live because mercy has come to us. When you believe in God's promise take the promise all the way because that's the only way you'll benefit from it. Don't take portion of the promise. Take the promise all the way. And the second advice, practical advice from this verse is that when God's mercy has been believed, rest assured that God will not take away what you have received. What he gave you is not to take it back from you. A lot of people are afraid they're going to lose their salvation. I hear this from some people. It happened to me in my early days of my faith. I said, what if I misbehave? Do I lose it all? You will not lose it all. What God gives you, he will never take away back from you. What he gave you is for good. If he said, I'll put enmity between your seed and her seed, he will forever have that enmity between you and evil and Satan. You will never again befriend Satan. And if he tells you that you belong to the seed of the woman, you will always belong to the seed of the woman. Mercy is pronounced. A champion is announced for you. A champion heel will be brushed, but Satan's head is crushed. When you receive Christ's mercy, his righteousness, his power, his wisdom, it is yours for good and forever. And Adam acted upon that. Genesis 3.21, look what he did. Look at that. It says that, they, Adam and his wife, and for Adam and his wife, Jehovah God made coats of skin and what? And closed them. Now, remember, moms, tell me when you close your child that he won't let you clothe him. Can you clothe him? Forget it. Moms will know best when a child doesn't want to be clothed in something they they almost give up before they can force the child to be clothed. For Adam and Eve to be clothed, that means they said, Lord, go ahead and clothe us. They submitted to God knowing that this is perfect and it will not be taken away from them. That they will have a perfect covering of their sins. They submitted to it and they knew that they are receiving something that is good forever. The skins of animal symbolizing the offering of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ that will clothe them with his righteousness and cover their sins once for all. Romans 16, 20 says, And the God of peace shall crush 
Satan under your feet shortly. No matter what the accuser will come to you, you can turn and say to him, I've been clothed by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. What God has given me, he shall never take away from me. No matter how badly I behave and no matter how I trip. Yes, he will discipline me, but he shall never leave me or forsake me. And the third practical application I want to leave you with, first, when you believe in a promise from God, take it all the way. Secondly, rest assured that God will not remove from you what you have received. And thirdly, expect to be attacked by your enemy, Satan. You will be attacked, but you will always be backed. That's right. Satan, because now you belong to the seed of the woman, will be always attacking you and engineering everything against you, but rest assured that Christ will not leave you or forsake you. He will always back you. Therefore, be bold in resisting Satan. Don't be afraid of Satan. Christ is always on, you, on your side. Christ is always at your right hand. Christ is always there upholding you. Do not fear Satan. Go ahead and enter his territory. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You want to preach the gospel? Go and do it. I thank God for our dear sister Julie who's in our midst right now today. I want to tell you, she's penetrating into the strongholds of Satan. Territories that people will say, that's scary. But I want to tell you, she's going holding the banner of Christ and knowing that Christ is behind her and she will penetrate those strongholds of Satan, fearing him not. And I think we need to be bold like Julie, like many others who said, I am not afraid because Christ is with me no matter what the attacks will be. When Satan comes to you, like we heard earlier this morning with temptation, resist him and he shall flee from you. When Christ when Christ is with you, no matter what the temptation is, no matter what the doubts are, you will be able to withstand the devil. Be bold in resisting the devil. He will for sure flee from you. In James chapter 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and what? And he will what? He will flee. Guaranteed. This is signed God. Signed by God. He said, I guarantee you that if you resist the devil, you resist him by the word of God, by the promises of God, rest assured that Satan will guaranteed flee away. It doesn't say, it doesn't say walk away, flee. He has to run away from you. Instead of you running from Satan, Satan will be running away from you. You're a scary person to Satan if you hold on to the promises of this book. You shouldn't be afraid of Satan. Satan should be afraid of us, folks. We bring fear and terror in the heart of Satan. When a believer armed with the word of God goes, I want to tell you, the kingdom of hell trembles in front of us. We bring fear to them. Be bold and advance into the territory of Satan. No one can stop you. We need to pray for one another that this fear will never come to us ever again. I'm done with this Genesis 3.15, but I pray that the facts will remain alive in you today and that you will act on the practical applications when you believe in a promise, believe it all the way. And then rest assured that God isn't going to cheat you and take it away from you. And last but not least, be bold and not be afraid. For God is with you and victory is yours if you hold on to his promises. Act on the promises and be bold and advance have you gotten some of that mercy? Have you received that mercy? Are you enjoying this mercy? Or are you living in fear? Are you living in defeat? Where are you today? When this verse comes to you, where does it find you? Are you in doubt? Won't you come and receive it entirely today? Listen, receiving mercy is as simple as acknowledging the call. He said, come. To me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you what? Yes. Rest. Have you come to that rest? Have you received that rest? Have you received that assurance? Have you received that living hope? Have you received that salvation? Are you sure that you belong to the seed of the woman? Are you still in the natural? Are there still things in your life that are still bothering you? The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? 
shall be saved. Whosoever. It doesn't say few. It does, God wants everybody to enjoy his mercy because from the beginning it was mercy on his heart. He doesn't like judgment. It's his unusual thing. It's the last thing God wants to do to judge you. The first thing, the utmost thing, is he wants to show you mercy. If you haven't received mercy today, if you are still a slave to sin, slave to Satan, don't be anymore there. Because the champion has come. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in our midst. And he wants to give you freedom and mercy and joy and assurance today. Let's bow our heads before the Lord. I call upon anybody here who's still struggling, who's still not sure who's still unhappy there's lack of joy in your life there is doubt that is creeping upon you don't blame it on anyone but you the promise is yours today for the bible says i shall put enmity between you and the woman her seed and your seed he shall bruise your head you shall bruise his heel god wants you to know that your enemy satan who is tormenting you is a defeated foe come to jesus christ by faith and he will give you victory he will give you that hope he will give you that assurance he'll give you that joy he'll give you that forgiveness he'll give you that living hope and you will walk out of this place a different person please do not leave this place as you came today leave it victorious leaning on the promise leaning on Genesis 3.15. I pray if anybody here would like to say, I'm still struggling, I need you to pray for me, please raise your hand and bring it down. Raise your hand and bring it down. Amen. Who else says, pray for me? Who else says, pray for me? Raise your hand. Don't, amen. 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 And all the others, please take this promise with you tonight and I pray that no one will be able to sleep until they've experienced the total victory in believing the promise and believing it fully. For, Father, we thank you this morning that you brought us to this wonderful verse of scripture that tells us that Satan is our enemy, but then we have a champion that can and has defeated Satan, and it tells us that that the heel of our champion was bruised, but the enemy's head was completely crushed. And now we can experience victory, not be afraid, take hold of the promise, entirely advance into the territory of the enemy, and bring this gospel of mercy to many others. Please use us, and I pray for anybody here who raised their hands, and those who didn't, that we will experience this full victory by leaning on the promise, leaning on it, entirely in jesus name we pray amen. amen amen god bless you and bless your walk with him according to his promises i'd like to invite